The Grand Strand in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, a popular and relatively safe place for families and spring breakers. Then one night, everything changed when 17-year-old Brittany Drexel walked out of this hotel, never to be seen or heard from again. I felt in my heart that, you know, she had made this decision that may have cost her her life. What happened to you, baby? Where did you go? Now, seven years later, the FBI may have found the answer to that question. There's people that know exactly what happened. But what one jailhouse snitch is telling the feds is beyond unthinkable. They dispose of the body and what they call the pet. Just the look in her eyes, I can just picture it. And it just plays over and over in my mind every day. But Brittany's mom and dad can only hope and pray it's not true. You just don't want to believe that. No. If you were fired all and up the spout again. Brittany was Dawn's firstborn child. She was just full of life. A fun-loving kid who relished being the center of attention. Brittany, she was so energetic. When the ball breaks, the cradle breaks. But Brittany's mother Dawn and father John were both only teenagers when she was born. Well, we're pretty much uh, babies ourselves. And Brittany was just a few years old when the childhood sweethearts went their separate ways. Dawn staying in Rochester, New York, and John moving to Tampa, Florida. Unfortunately, me and Brittany didn't see each other. Until finally being reunited more than 10 years later when she was 16, as John recalls in the first interview he has ever given. So that you had a lot of time to make up for. That's exactly what it was. We, we just clicked like in five minutes. It was just such a great moment. What went through your mind when you first saw her? She looked like me. Her attitude, her looks, just, I was in awe. I, I don't, there's no words for it. I was very, just very happy. Brittany had grown into a fine young woman and John was just getting reacquainted with his daughter. I would fly up to go see her, take her shopping, go see the movies, uh, go to restaurants, just anything I can do to spend time and get to know her more. He wasn't to know that in less than a year after their reunion, he would be losing Brittany again. This time forever. In retrospect, how precious is that year to you now? It's very precious. I'll never forget it. It'll always be in my mind. For weeks before her disappearance, Brittany had been bugging her mother about going to Myrtle Beach with some friends for spring break. And I told her, I said, no, Brittany. She goes, why? Nothing's going to happen to me, Mom. I said, Brittany, there's no parental supervision. I don't know these kids you're going with. And I said, something's going to happen to you. So Brittany asked her mom if she could spend a few days at a friend's home in Rochester. They had put this person on the phone and I thought I was talking to a parent and I told her that she could stay since, you know, it was her spring break. But it wasn't a parent. And instead, Brittany hopped in a car with three girlfriends and sneaked off to Myrtle Beach. Brittany never lied to me, as far as I knew. You know, I trusted her. And Brittany would maintain the charade by phone right up to the day of her disappearance. I said, what are you doing later on? She said, oh, we're just gonna hang out here for a while and then we're gonna go back to my friend's house and watch a movie and we're just gonna hang out. She says, I'll see you tomorrow, I love you. And I told her I love her too. And that was the last time I talked to her. Then tomorrow came and Dawn would learn the truth in the worst way imaginable. Getting a call from Brittany's boyfriend, John Greco, who had stayed behind in Rochester. He's like, she's in Myrtle Beach and they can't find her. I said, what do you mean they can't find her? And my heart just sank. I thought that she was here the whole time. And I felt in my heart that she had made this decision that may have cost her her life. What do you call that? A mother's intuition. John told Dawn that Brittany had suddenly stopped returning his text and that none of her friends in Myrtle Beach had seen her since the previous night. We kept calling her and calling her. I started calling her cell phone myself, getting no answers. And that's when I was like, we got to go down there. 
I have to leave. I have to go down there and try to find her. I said, well, uh, I'm packing. Uh, I'm on the way as well. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina was alive with partying spring breakers when Brittany Drexel's parents got into town. But their 17-year-old daughter was no longer among the young revelers after mysteriously vanishing just a day earlier. And Brittany's mom and dad and friends from Rochester, New York, were searching frantically for her. Even um, looking in the dumpsters and empty buildings. They learned Brittany had arrived in Myrtle Beach with her three friends from Rochester two days before she disappeared hanging on the beach through the day, going to bars at night, and doing a little partying. Just like any spring breaker does. Dawn was hoping and praying Brittany would be found alive and well, but also fearing she might not. And I'd hear the waves crashing, thinking, oh my God, maybe she's in the water. And Dad John couldn't help thinking about his last conversation with Brittany. She actually said, Dad, uh, what would you do if I uh, ran away? with a rich guy. He wondered if she did. That's something that's always been stuck in my mind. The last time Brittany was seen was on security video showing her walking out of this hotel where a friend Peter Brozowitz was staying and walking towards the main road. And what was her purpose for going to see Peter? To pick up her flip flops. Supposedly she left flip flops in his car. As the last known person to see her, police first interviewed Peter, then Brittany's three girlfriends. And cell phone records would show Brittany's phone pinged seven miles south of Myrtle Beach, just half an hour after her disappearance. Then two and a half hours later at 11.58 p.m., her cell phone pings again. This time it's 50 miles south of Myrtle Beach, a town called McClellanville. The phone then goes dead and the case goes cold after massive searches of the area failed to find any trace of Brittany. We did have to come to the realization that she may not be alive, but we're, we're, we're still hoping that we'll be able to find her. Now, more than seven years after Brittany disappeared, a dramatic break in the case. To Quan Brown, a prison inmate serving 25 years for manslaughter in an unrelated case, told investigators he personally witnessed what happened to Brittany saying she was kidnapped, gang raped, pistol whipped, and shot dead by several men led by Deshaun Taylor of McClellanville. The area you will recall where Brittany's cell phone last pinged. I know Brittany must have been so scared. Just the look in her eyes, I can just picture it. And what Brittany's abductors are said to have done with her body after killing her is gruesome beyond belief. Investigators believe her body was dumped in a swampy area like this, teeming with alligators. I just can't get it out of my mind what they did to her. But Taylor denied in this interview with Crime Watch Daily that he had anything to do with Brittany's disappearance. I want to give you the opportunity to defend yourself. Have you ever met Brittany Drexel? No, sir. He says the same of Taquan Brown, the inmate who accuses him of killing her. I don't even know the guy. Is it possible he knew your father or your brother? Yes, sir. It so happens that just a year after Brittany vanished, Taylor's father, Sean, was actually arrested for allegedly trying to abduct this other young woman in the same location Brittany vanished. I imagine they would have hurt me. They could have been raped, and I don't think they would have ever found me. But the charges were dismissed because he had an alibi, and his son also claims to have an alibi the day Brittany disappeared. Who can vouch for your whereabouts? A lot of my friends and family. The FBI has charged Deshaun Taylor in an unrelated armed robbery, and his attorney says he has an incentive to tell all he knows about Brittany's case. Deshaun has the ability to get himself out of 10 to life if he could provide information, and he just doesn't have any information to provide. Special Agent Mike Conley concedes there is not enough evidence to charge Taylor in Brittany's disappearance and says he can't disclose details of the case. There's so much I can't say about this investigation, and the reason being is because it's really at a sensitive point right now. When the world says give up, hope whispers one more time. Brittany's dad, John, is hoping the prison informant is lying about what happened to his daughter. You just don't want to believe that. No. He's already in jail for something else. Maybe he's just making something up to shorten his sentence. There's people 
that know exactly what happened to Brittany. We're going to work as long as it takes until we can solve this case. And the FBI is now offering a reward to help find Brittany. I've been authorized by the director of the FBI to offer a $25,000 reward leading to the arrest and the conviction of those responsible. And those who love Brittany are asking for the public to help find her. We need everyone's help to bring something from her home to us. We need your help. We need someone to help us. But Brittany's mom, Dawn, is losing hope. It's very gut-wrenching and heart-wrenching, you know, that I'll never be able to see her face again. That I'll never be able to tell her I love her.